I would like, before I start, to dedicate this uh, presentation to the memory of the woman that uh, anointed the Son of Man when he uh, was in Simon the Leper's house. And with that said, um, what the the um, what I'm trying to convey is the uh, the mystery of Bible prophecy. I'm going to be using a couple of props that help to make this thing simpler. And one of them is this. And basically the idea behind it is that it's a book and it is Bible prophecy. In other words, all the pieces that are throughout the Bible that we know of a Bible prophecy if you took them out and you put them in a, this is going to happen and this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen order, what you would have is you have one book and this one book would have three chapters. This is just for this demonstration. The other prop that I'm gonna be using is a jigsaw puzzle. And the, it's any jigsaw puzzle, doesn't matter, it, but it has things in common with Bible prophecy. So we, now we proceed back to this book. The three chapters are um, dealing with events that are going to take place in the future. And these three things are periods of time. I'm going to switch over to the um, screen share. Can you see that? That's uh, the green button. How's that? There. There, okay. yes. Okay. So, we're dealing with time. And everybody, for the most part, if you've done any kind of studying on prophecy, everybody's got a chart. There's all kinds of different charts. Um, I'm not going to try and get into anybody's right or wrong, but I'm just trying to show, uh, share with what I know and understand. And the idea behind this is that the presentation, I mean, we're presently, this is in the present, on, which is on the left side of the chart, and time is going to the right. And in the past, is on the left and the future again is on the right. So these three periods that are in the, the future are, this is the, the first one we're gonna be addressing is uh, the second coming. And that is by our Hebrew uh, brothers, they call it Yom Adonai. And our Christian brethren use the term the day of the Lord. Now, this is um, significant. I'm not a big fan of using the day of the Lord, but it, we have a tremendous resource, which is the uh, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, and you can get all kinds of information from this, and it uses the term the day of the Lord. So for this demonstration, I'll be using the day of the Lord. This represents the coming, the day that the, the Son of Man returns. Brother Michael. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. Zechariah 14.1. So this period is um, one of the, the the periods, and it's like the primary period is what everybody is looking for. Well, most everybody. The, and the duration is one day. So this, 
goes into our time chart as a future event one day ahead of time. Now, all the information back to our, our uh, uh, Bible, the Bible prophecy uh, prop, we have all the information that takes place on the day of the Lord can be inserted into the second chapter. So, the second period that we're going to be uh, discussing is uh, before the second coming. Now, e even though this is future, it's a time that takes place before the second coming. That's why they call it before the second coming. This is called the Great Tribulation period. It's a three and a half year period. And this is also the 42 months that the beast is prophesied to rule the earth. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. Revelation 13, 5 and 7. So the duration of this period is 42 months or, three and, or three and a half years. And it takes place before the second coming, the day of the Lord. All the information can be extracted from there and inserted into the first chapter of this book we're trying to uh, uh, create to show how this puzzle works as uh, Bible prophecy. The third period is after the second coming. So you have the second coming, you have the period before the second coming, and then you have the period after the second coming. This is also referred to as the millennial reign. Blessed and holy is he that takes part in the first resurrection. On those the second death has no power. They will be priests of Elohim and of the Messiah, where they will reign with him a thousand years. Revelation 26. And this period has a duration of a thousand years. So... This on the, the graph takes place after the, uh, the second coming. Uh, any uh, scriptures that have to do with the second coming, I mean, with the millennial reign, can be gathered up and inserted into the third chapter in this book of prophecy. So our next challenge is how do you identify the pieces? And very simply, there's catchphrases. For example, the term, the day of the Lord. This catchphrase, all you have to do is go through your Bible, take out your concordance, find out where every reference to the day of the Lord or Yom Adonai or the day of Yahweh However you, whatever reference you use, you can go in and you can find out all kinds of information that concerning the day of the Lord. And then you can take that information and you can insert it into this book that, that we're calling Bible Prophecy. So let me just back up for a second. This is what the puzzle looks like. The puzzle is a, it's a word puzzle. It's a mystery. And it's really just one book that provides a lot of information. And it doesn't consume the entire Bible, but it's spread throughout the entire Bible. And the trick is to be able to find the pieces extract them from there and organize them into this book that has these three chapters. 
So this comes to the front of the, uh, the puzzle. The, the puzzle, this is one of the things that has in common with Bible prophecy is this puzzle is without the cover is extremely challenging to solve. You have absolutely no idea what the picture is. So you don't, it's really tedious to figure it out. So you're saying that the cover shows you what the completed picture looks like. Exactly. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish with this book that I made, you know, that I just pasted some paper to the front to give you an idea. This is what the puzzle looks like. I'm glad you, you interjected that. So the trick to this is um, making this, we have been provided with a chapter in the Bible that acts as the picture. And that chapter is Revelation 12, the, the parable of the woman and the man child. Basically, there, there'll be two groups of believers at the second coming. The first group of believers are those that will, will have died in their faith. Uh, those that are, you know, they're going to be in the first resurrection. And obviously, these are those individuals that have been martyred in the past. But what people don't think of is that this includes those that are going to be martyred in the future, all the way up to the end. The second group are those that are going to be alive to greet the Son of Man at his return. And these individuals are recognized in the Bible as the remnant of Israel. Revelation 12 addresses both groups. There's basically in Revelation 12, there's two groups and two messages, a message for both. Those that are going to be martyred and the, the, that are going to be and the remnant. So to those that are martyred, the answer, the, the message is uh, Revelation 12, 17. Mike. Mike. And the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of the Son of Man. Revelation 12, 17. So basically the beast is going to uh, persecute and uh, martyr the remnant of her seed. And this is a more uh, more depth, in-depth description can be found in uh, Revelation uh, 13. Now the remnant is a, net, a different message. Then the woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared by Elohim, where she would be fed for 1260 days. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle so she could fly into the wilderness to her place where she would be nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Revelation 12, 16 and 14. I want to go into depth on this. This is really very important. This is a message of divine survival instructions for the remnant. I want to begin with um, this. The, the first thing that needs to be identified is fleeing. This is where the woman fled. She's going to flee into a proverbial wilderness. Then she's going to 
a place prepared by Elohim. So it's not many places, but specifically one place. And this place is one that is prepared by Elohim. It is there she's going to be fed. for 1260 days, which is three and a half years. And it is there she's going to be protected from the beast. So I want to go into more detail. We have this, these six items that I want to address. The first one we're going to address is for the 1260 days or the three and a half years. This is the same three and a half years that the beast rules for 42 months. So the beast rules for 42 months and we can scratch that off as far as this is one down this is something that we're we've, we're we've addressed in those two verses the next thing we're going to address is a, a place prepared by elohim mike and it will come to pass that whoever calls on the name of yahweh shall be delivered for on mount zion and jerusalem shall be deliverance as Yahweh has said, and in the remnant that Yahweh will call. Joel 2.32. So the place prepared by Elohim is Mount Zion in Jerusalem, where the remnant are going to be called and where they're going to be delivered, according to the prophet Joel. So we can scratch off the place prepared by Elohim. The next two that we're going to address is going to be the remnant and protected from the beast. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. And that day. So, the so hold just a second. Okay. So the idea behind this, the seven women, this is a, a future prophecy. Um, uh, we'll get to it when, at, in verse five, but this is a future prophecy and there's going to be the remnant that are going to be, um, you have the men and you have the women. The children aren't part of this issue, but just for this, for this discussion, these seven women are, are represent for every one man. These seven women represent the female count of the remnant. Now, if you look back in the Old Testament census, the men were counted and uh, documented according to their name and the tribe, and the women were doc documented, but and sometimes counted, but not according to their name but rather to the name of the men that they were associated with whether it's their husband or their brother or their their dad so this seven women to every one man is a description of the female count of the remnant okay mike In that day shall the brats of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth will be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. So and this is the the so this is they are recognized again by Isaiah, Isaiah as the uh, escaped of Israel. Go ahead, Mike. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Let me just stay here to keep my my chart going. So, 
the, the remnant of Israel are the escaped of Israel. Okay, so I'm marking that one down. So go ahead. And it, sh and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. So the another thing that we're looking at here is this is the uh, uh, a confirmation with Joel chapter 232 that Mount Zion in Jerusalem is the place of refuge where deliverance will be for those that get there. So we can mark that down as another uh, a criteria for the, the remnant. So go ahead. When Yahweh shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And Yahweh will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her, her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Isaiah 4, 1 through 6. So there, one of these d women are recognized by Isaiah as the daughters of Zion. And we can mark that down. And we also see that they will be protected by a pillar of fire and column of smoke which happened, the last time that happened was during the um, uh, Exodus when they were in the wilderness, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. And they were protected from the Egyptians that were approaching the pillar of fire and column smoke, got in between them and protected them from that. Well, this is going to happen again. Another thing about this is that this is, this is significant, that Jerusalem was never, has never been protected by a pillar of fire and column of smoke, and that this is a future event. So we can scratch those off. And the next one that we're going to address is uh, being fed, where the woman is being fed. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden name. I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. Revelation 2.17. So the... Um, this reference to being fed is uh, manna. So during the tribulation period, the remnant are going to be on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And for that period of time, they're going to be fed manna, just like the children of Israel were fed during the exodus from Egypt. And the last one is flee. This one is good in the sense that if, well, it's not so much if, but rather we're being foretold that this is going, you know, that, that we, that this is, how do I say this? If this is true, if the woman and the man child parable, so to speak, is conveying to us that the remnant are going to be protected in a place prepared by Elohim for a period of three and a half years, then there should be evidence to that effect found in the Bible. And that's, should, there should be evidence for when it starts and there should be evidence when it ends. So we're going to address the evidence for when it starts.
Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Matthew 24, 15, and 16. So here the Son of Man is providing flee instructions. Right off the bat, he's not telling these people at the end of the age, he's not telling them you need to flee so that you can go be a martyr. He's telling them to flee because they're, he's giving them instructions to survive, to meet him at his return. So what he's saying is, is that those that see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, when you see this guy standing in the holy, the holy place, then you, uh, you should understand that you, though, that this is the, the sign that the tribulation, the great tribulation period is beginning and you need to get to this place that I've been telling you about, which happens to be the old city of Jerusalem. Now, many people see this as fleeing Jude Jerusalem and fleeing away, but not, it's not saying that. Judea is like a county that surrounds, you know, the, the city of Jerusalem is inside Judea, and Judea is like a, a large county with a city inside that area. Likewise, Jerusalem is inside Judea, and it's a mountain fortress. And it's a fortress that's built on several mountains. One, two of them that people are very familiar with is, um, one is Mount Zion, and the other one is Mount Moriah. And there's a handful more of other mountains that make up this uh, this mountain fortress but this these are instructions to flee to the city now he's not telling those that are in uh, uh the ozarks or in alaska or siberia or whatever that it's time to flee then because he's only talking to those that are in judea at that time so the flea, the idea behind flea is divine survival instructions. And the old, like I said, the old city uh, is a mountain fortress and um, Mount Zion and Mount Moriah are part of that uh, system. So these are the, the, the two references to you know, the, the first reference is to flee to the mountain. Now we should have a reference at the end of the three and a half year period, and that lies in Zechariah chapter 14. Mike. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and your spoil shall be divided in your midst. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove to the north, and the half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azor. Yes, you shall flee, like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah. And Yahweh my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. Zechariah 14, 1 through 5. So, well, first off, this is talking about the second coming of the Son of Man. We see where the Son of Man is touching foot on the Mount of Olives. The first verse starts off with the day of the Lord, which we already know is a catchphrase, just, just po pointing to that these passages are about the second coming of the Son of Man. The other thing is, is that he instructs those that are, that are not cut off from the city to flee. 
so that which are again divine survival instructions and he's there to fight against the nations that have come that have been against the old city of jerusalem for a period of three and a half years so this is we can scratch off flee so we have basically addressed all these issues and this is I'd, I'd like to review this on what we have just discussed one is that this we we were found out who the remnant are and that they are just in the short context the escaped of israel uh, they're among the living in jerusalem they're recognized as the daughters of zion Three and a half years after the start of the tribulation period, or at the beginning of the great tribulation period, they, they're going to be in Judea, and that's when they're going to flee to the old city of Jerusalem. Then they're, go, they're, they're going to this place prepared by Elohim, which is the old city of Jerusalem. And they, um, and it is there that they're going to be fed the the manna, just like the children of Israel were fed in the wilderness. They're going to be protected from the beast, but with a cloud by day and fire by night, just like the children of Israel were protected and led while they were in the wilderness. And this is all going to take place for a period of 1260 days 42 months that the beast rules or for a period of three and a half years and that's all there is Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we we oh, uh, that no, I'm here. That's all there is. Okay, <laughs> you you have a great way of ending. That's Very like, abrupt. <laughs> that's all there is. Well, um, what what causes these passages to cohere? I mean, you're picking them out really in a way cherry picking and it makes sense but do these come together through divine revelation or through your study or you know where do you come up with them uh i when i first came to know the son of man mm -hmm. um i refused to read anybody other else's work and I just studied it big time, and I let the the Bible speak for itself. And so, how long ago was that? Long time ago? Yeah, about forty years ago. So this has kind of been welling up ever since. Exactly, mm -hmm. and the circumstances that are taking place are making it more obvious. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're right when you say cherry picking and a lot of people don't they have a problem with cherry picking but the idea behind it is is that's that puzzle there's this piece over here and there's a piece over here and you have to take the pieces and you know put them together so why do you think that so many different people that deal with biblical prophecy well, they basically have one foundation here, but they vary so much. You ever thought of that? Yeah. I. Your question, I, I want to think, is that why is there so many different interpretations? Would yeah. that be a good... I, I think that... Um, I don't think that anybody can come to an agreement on 
all these end time things because maybe it is a puzzle and maybe there isn't supposed to be unity on them. I agree. Uh, what is happening, you know, where we just read in, I think it was the third verse where it was talking about the, the, the blood of the uh, daughters of Zion. They're going to be purging. Okay. There's a purge that's coming. This gathering of the remnant is, you know, everybody likes to think like, oh, we're all going to, you know, everything's going to be wonderful. And we're all, you know, we're going to all go, but it's not. It's going to be under dire circumstances, a lot like the way, you know, with the Arab Spring, like, you know, how um, Assyria uh, fell and you have this, these refugees that f fleed away from Assyria. What this is going to be is a, uh, you're going to have ref refugee crisis, but they are going to be coming from the four corners of the earth. And it's not going to be a, a, a pleasant thing. You're not going to get a first class ticket so to speak and this is um this is what's coming do you see a particular time frame on when i can't you know i don't i can't put a prediction but i have a feeling it all i think it might revolve around trump still being president at the time when things start to coagulate i i feel it isn't necessarily positively true but um it i can see it happening with him the reason i say that is that uh trump he you know all career politicians in the united states would never they were never recognize jerusalem as being the capital of of israel and he came along and he did it and no career politician would address the issue of the Golan Heights also. And Trump did that too. So there are certain events that he is doing that the career politicians won't touch. Now, let's say he, he, he loses this time around and you have a career politician come back into, uh, to be president. He, that, I doubt that president, I'm not saying it won't happen, but I doubt that president would do the things that uh, Trump is doing. So I'm going to put a period that, you know, while he's president, that has a, a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities there. So. He certainly is pro Israel. It's incredible. He's so pro Israel. He, he is. He is. It really is incredible. Okay, make a short-term prophecy. Is he going to win the next election? <laughs> I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, my thoughts, I, I certainly hope so. Um, it's just that the other side are so ridiculously entrenched in coercion, uh, socialism, uh, racism, sexism. They're absolutely eaten up by those isms, even though the biggest claim is that they're against them all. Right. They are absolutely 100% involved in using them as political tools, and that is disgusting to me well you know i'm uh, you've heard of a uh, reagan republican okay i'm a carter republican okay i i voted for jimmy carter and was so disappointed in that fellow that i decided at that time i am never going to vote for another democrat and now to see where that party is gone, it's simply anti-Christian, anti-decency. Right. And this tearing down of monuments, hey, you may be right about it. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. 
I'm not predicting anything. <laughs> me, me either. I'm, I've got the... <laughs> Well, let's see what Mike has to say about that. Yeah, let's see. Mike. Let's see. Oh, I, I'm afraid voters like me are going to cost Trump the election. Disappointed voters like me. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I voted for Trump to uh, change the immigration laws, and he didn't. Yeah, that's you know, true. He, he's actually increased immigration. I voted for him to build a wall, and all he's done is replace, you know, a few hundred miles of fencing. I, you know, it's like... Uh, I voted for him to uh, save our economy and it's in the toilet. <laughs> I, I'm just, uh, you know, like you talk about uh, being disappointed by Carter. Uh, I think uh, Donald Trump will probably be the last man I'll ever vote for. I, I think voting is pointless. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it, it doesn't matter what you vote for. The bankers and the lobbyists will have their way. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm hopefully there's not enough, uh, uh, you know, uh, disappointed and, uh, and, and betrayed voters like me who are just, you know, fed up after all the years of it, you know. My only concern is if he is not reelected, what the other guy's going to do. But then again, I try to stay above these things and, and keep kingdom minded rather than, you know, sweat in uh, and rub my hands and be disappointed about these politicians in this world. Exactly. That's that's the view I take. I don't uh it's it's like, you know, Democrat, Republican, the bankers and lobbyists are gonna, you know, it doesn't matter which one you vote for. It's like to me, you know, all this uh uh, you know, this political controversy that goes on, that's just a show to, uh, you know, to divide the people and, and make them pick sides to keep us from uniting. You know, so I, you know, I try not to get caught up in the circus show of uh, daily politics anymore. It's just, uh, you know, it's just to keep the people riled up so the bankers and lobbyists can, can, uh, can have their way. And, you know, it works on those people, so... I've just decided not to participate any longer. It's the world system. I kind of feel like Mark Svoboda has something here to say too. Do you, Mark? Do I? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got my theory, and it's based on the 6,000 years and the uh, Jubilee 50 year thing, and I have it. Seven year tribulation start in um, March 14th of next year, which is a bib one. Okay. God knows it. We've talked in the past. You're going to have to come on and explain that one of these days. I will. Okay. Okay. We'll set that up. And in the meantime, okay. Mike, you're Mark. I I recognize Mark. I don't recognize your phone, but I recognize you know your voice. Yeah, we have talked about that. So I'm oh, kind so of looking forward to been, seeing you. You two have been colluding then. Yeah, we, oh, <laughs> yeah. we're ganging up on you. <laughs> well, I just you know I uh, I don't share my opinion on prophecy because I I'm uh, I believe that it's already been done. It's already done. But I'm always interested to find out what the other people think about it. And hey, if something strikes me, then I'm willing to change and I'm willing to learn. I would like to say something to that. Please do. Um, the, what I see is going to happen is this gathering of the remnant. And we have been forewarned of purges that are going to take place. For example, the parable of the ten virgins. Five of them are, they're, all of them are believers, and all of them are actually alive up to the second coming of the Son of Man. But five of them don't make it in. And the idea behind it is, is that the five that don't make it in are purged and this there's point of it is is that there's 
several purges that are going to be taking place during this gathering of the remnant. And unless you're aware of these purges and prepare yourself for these purges, and I'm not talking about going out and buying guns or going out and buying, you know, a million pounds of feed or, you know, water. I'm talking about in the Bible, it explains how these purges are going to be executed and they give you an idea. If you aren't looking for them, you might not make, you know, you might get purged. You might not make the cut, so to speak. So um, I highly recommend if you're, if you're not interested in it or whatever, you need to understand that these purges are coming. And if you keep the commandments of Elohim, and if you, you keep the testimony of the Son of Man, you're going to be in this gathering of the remnant. Well, another thing about that is the keeping of watch. The keeping watch. The um, rejected virgins just simply fell asleep. I, I understand that to be they got too involved in the things of this world and just missed out. I think that's Praise the case. Or were you intimating that maybe I wouldn't make it? You know what? I, I don't know who's going to make it. Uh, I, I, for example, I'm just going to use this as an example. I never, I knew things were going, are, are going to get worse before COVID-19. I knew things were going to get worse. I never in this world expected COVID-19. It just like, wow, it just like caught me off guard, that, that particular thing. And then when you sit back and you look at it and say, oh, oh my goodness, that, it fits into the picture. It, it's just like, this is, and if you aren't aware that, this, that something is happening, you're not, you're just going to miss it. You completely miss it. And the, we're looking at, we're being tested. And this is what, you know, these are things that are happening. So, this is a so thing to say you're not going to make it, I don't know. Okay. It's beyond, uh, it's been predicted, especially in fictional literature, that something like this would happen. I am concerned about the response to it. Because it seems to me, at least from my perspective, that the response taken by the major powers of the world was not correct.